NBC Sports presents the best in college basketball, the 1980 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. Tonight, from Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana, it's the Cardinals of Louisville versus the UCLA Bruins. Brought to you by the small cars with the Lincoln Mercury difference, Bobcat, Capri, and Zephyr. By Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob Beer, weekends were made for Michelob. By Gillette Atra, the pivoting head razor. It's Gillette's best shave. And by Texaco, with over 66,000 employees doing their best at their jobs to keep your trucks. of a Louisville team that has never won an NCAA title, actually favored over a UCLA team that for so many years actually owned this NCAA tournament. Those are some of the contrasts for some of the similarities. Let's go over to Dick Enberg. Dick? Bryant, there are some common denominators tonight and unusual ones. Both are very young teams. Seven of the ten starters are either freshmen or sophomores. And both teams will operate with a relatively short center. UCLA Sanders is 6'6", and McRae of Louisville is 6'7". And then, of course, there's the Wooden influence. And the Wizard of Westwood is with us now. Coach Wooden, you won ten of these. One of these men tonight, Crum or Brown, will win their first. If you could meet with them right now and give them some advice, what would you tell them? Dick, I believe the most meaningful thing that I could say would be for them not to want it too much. You can want something so much at times that emotion takes over instead of reason. And when decisions are made through emotion, they're usually not uh, very good. Furthermore, that can uh, uh, subconsciously affect your players and they won't do so well. I know before I won my first one, I wanted it so much that I think I impaired our chances of getting it for a while. Some advice from the wizard himself. He won 10 national titles. No other coach even close to that incredible record. Thank you for being with us, Coach John Wooden. Uh, some insight now into the players you'll be watching tonight. Both teams blessed with outstanding talent. For our NBC scouting report, here's Brian Gumbel. Okay, Dick, you start talking Louisville, and you've got to start talking with number 35. Pick out a name. Super Darrell, Dr. Dunk, Dr. Duncanstein. In anybody's book, he is the greatest player in Louisville history, their all-time leading scorer. He's blessed with a 42-inch vertical leap, can take it inside, can shoot it from outside. He's the man that's gotten him here. He's the player of the year. But what a supporting cast he's got. All of the Cardinals are high-flying, all of them young, all of them tough. Darrell Griffith may lead the action, but inside, he's got help from a forward named Derek Smith, 6'7". He's also got help from inside, Rodney McRae, 6'7", starting freshman center, taking over for his brother Scooter. The show is run by Jerry Eaves, cool and calm like all the Louisville Cardinals. He's given Denny Crum his best chance ever at his first NCAA title. As for the Bruins, they started the season out more like teddy bears than Giants. But they found a leader, and they came on strong. Eight and six at one point in the year, the young Bruins started to gel, and they have surprised everybody in getting this far. Their leader is Kiki Vandeway, a senior forward, the closest thing the Bruins may have to a star. But they have found plenty to cheer about in Westwood, plenty to cheer about in a young team that has stopped committing the crucial turnover, stopped missing the free throw down the stretch, stopped beating themselves. They've won 13 of their last 15, but what a cast they have. Rod Foster may be as quick as any player in the nation. He's just a freshman, but he's their leading scorer. They call him the Rocket. He 
can, as the players say, fill it up. They've also got help underneath in leadership in a senior by the name of James Wilkes, their toughest defender, perhaps their best rebounder. Inside, Sanders, Michael Sanders, is only 6'6", but like all the Bruins, quick off his feet. And constantly, Larry Brown's getting help from four freshmen who have helped his program out immeasurably. Larry Brown, in just his first year, is in the season's final college game. Those are the players. To find out how they respond, let's go over to Dick and Al and Billy. Gentlemen. And Brian, it's a pleasure to introduce my colleagues on our NBC basketball telecast. Al McGuire won this tournament three years ago in his final game as head coach of Marquette University and a man regarded as being the top knowledge uh, strategist in this game, Billy Packer. And Billy, we'll start with you, the UCLA Bruins. We talked about how young they are, but they have a senior that has been so instrumental in their success. Well, and Kiki Vandeweghe, they had the steadying influence that was needed on this team, Dick. He has surprising quickness. He goes on the break well. He's a power forward personified. Goes to the boards well, has a good outside perimeter shot. Maybe the United States quiet All-American, a super player. Well, while Vandeweghe, the leading scorer and leading rebounder, may be docile, Louisville senior is explosive, and he's a great All-American. Darrell Griffin, he's the best thing that happened to college basketball since sliced bread. If he's relaxed, he's awesome in his play. He's one of the few cards in the country that could ever take his team to the finals. But the key thing for people to watch with Dr. Duncan Stein tonight is that if he hits his first shot, the Bruins are in trouble. Daryl Griffith, player of the year, All-American, his mind on his biggest, biggest game, his final game as a college athlete playing for the national championship. But his heart is a long way away from Indianapolis. Well, I have a friend back in Louisville named Jerry Stringer, and, uh, you know, he's fighting against cancer. Uh, he's been a good friend of mine ever since I was in seventh grade. We did a lot of things together socially. Uh, he lived next door to me in the dorm for three years, and, you know, it was just like living with him. And, uh, you know, last spring, I guess, you know, found out that he had cancer. And uh, cancer's winning right now. And, you know, I just like to dedicate the game, if we win, to Jerry Stringer. This is for you. Sometime a game is more than just a game. It's UCLA and Louisville for the NCAA Basketball Championship. Frank Fallon will have the starting lineups for tonight's game right after this commercial time. mileage mercury and we're proud of it if you think only imports give you high gas mileage think again these mercury zephyr cars and wagons have about the same mileage ratings as toyota corona yet zephyr has more room inside for your family and is sticker priced over 500 dollars less zephyr it's a high mileage car built in america from lincoln mercury now that's something to be proud of see your lincoln mercury dealer this pride is shining <laughs> Weekends were made for Nickelodeon. If it's for real. Well, that calls for something special. Hey, Hi. Hi. Yeah. Michelob, all around. Make your own weekend a little more special with a smooth and mellow taste of Michelob. Michelob? What's the occasion? I've met the woman. Again. Weekends <laughs> were made for Michelob. You're looking at a superbly engineered instrument, a Gillette Atra razor. Because no two faces are the same, the head pivots, allowing Atra micro-smooth twin blades to adjust to the contours of your face for a really close, safe shave. If all this sounds like we're trying to get you to buy an Atra, you're wrong. We just want you to buy five blades, and we'll give you this Atra razor free. But hurry, an offer like this goes fast. Buy five blades, get a free Atra razor. Ladies and gentlemen, it's UCLA versus Louisville for the 1980 National Collegiate Basketball Championship. Let's meet tonight's starters. The forwards from UCLA, number 55, a 6'8 senior from Los Angeles, California, Kiki Vandalay. From Louisville, number 41, a 6'8 sophomore from Sylvester, Georgia, Riley Brown. UCLA, number 35, a 6'7 senior from Los Angeles, California, James Brooks. For Louisville, number 43, a 6'6 sophomore from Hogansville, Georgia, Derek Smith. Now the 
centers for UCLA number 11, a 6'6 six -six sophomore from Derrida, Louisiana, Mike Sanders. For Louisville, number 22, a 6'7 freshman from Mount Vernon, New York, Rodney McClay. And the guard for UCLA, number 14, a 6'3 freshman from Pasadena, California, Michael Colton. From Louisville, number five, a 6'4 sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky, Gary E. And for UCLA, number 10, a 6'1 freshman from New Britain, Connecticut, Rod Foster. And for, UC for Louisville, number 35, a 6'4 senior from Louisville, Kentucky, Carol Griffin. The head coach for the UCLA Bruins, Harry Brown. And the head coach for the Louisville Cardinals, Denny Crum. Denny Crum, who won 200 games in a shorter span than any coach in history. Larry Brown trying to become the first rookie coach at an institution to win the national championship in his first year. We're set to go. 17,000 at Market Square Arena, Indianapolis. The opening tip-off coming up. How do folks feel when they service their cars with Napa brand parts? Satisfied. On top of the world. Listen to it. Just listen to it. I did it. And no parts left over. Lots of Napa brand parts are better than a car's original parts. And using quality parts produces results that make folks feel... Great. When the name is Napa, the standard is quality. This is the idea behind the IBM Electronics 75 typewriter to help secretaries be more productive automatically. It has automatic retyping and revision, automatic centering and underlining, automatic erasing and column layout. The IBM Electronic 75 typewriter. It saves time, and whatever saves time is more productive automatically. Miss Jones, are these your gloves? Collegiate Basketball Championship that will be decided in a land they call Hoosier Hysteria, their love for this game of basketball. First time ever this state, known for its basketball athletes, has hosted the game. UCLA will start with the seniors at Ford, Vandaway and Wilkes, the freshmen at guards, and the center 6'6", Sanders. Louisville with the All-American 35, Griffith and Eves in the backcourt. Brown and Smith are sophomores at Ford, and a freshman McRae at center. UCLA games the tap. Holton, a freshman. This is Wilkes, a senior. Sanders, just a sophomore. Foster, sharp shooting freshman. Vandaway, the senior and leading scorer. There's the key matchup. Wiley Brown on Vandaway. Has McRae on Wilkes. Inside is Sanders. Can't hit it. And it's out of bounds to UCLA. Wiley Brown, number 41, touched it last for Louisville. Sanders pulled up on that shot. He didn't follow through. He thought he was going to be fouled. You see the youth on both sides. There's not a junior in the starting lineup. Two seniors start for UCLA and one senior, Daryl Griffith, for Louisville. 2-1-2 zone now by Louisville on the out-of-bounds situation with Wiley Brown right in the center. Rod Foster, the freshman, can't hit it. Here come the Cardinals of Louisville. Jerry Eves, the sophomore, 6'4". The All-American Griffin. Great pass inside. Wiley Brown. Louisville leads it to nothing. I didn't think that was good shot selection, even though it went in. There's that full-court zone press now by Louisville, trying to force the ball down the right-hand side of the court. This Louisville team is not unlike the first UCLA team to win the national championship, but John Wood had a 6'5 center and pressed the opposition full court. Inside Sanders from 15, short again. Harold Griffith with a rebound to Derek Smith. He'll shoot it. Rebound Sanders, the lead rebounder in the tournament. They want to play offensive basketball. I thought both those shots were not good selections at this time of the game. But they got to get Derek Smith off the starting blocks. He had two flat games so far in the NCAA. UCLA, Louisville, two to nothing. Griffith with a gamble. We played nearly two minutes, and UCLA yet to score. Wiley Brown not going all the way out on Kiki Van 
Vandeweghe, I guess he has seen that Vandeweghe will put it on the floor and go to the baseline. Sanders helping out. It is a Louisville crowd, no question about the partisan fans here. They're rooting for Louisville. The Cardinals have never been in the final game, although they've been in the final four, three of the last nine years. Kiki Vandeweghe ties it at two. Dick, we've seen that no small man's been able to handle Darrell Griffith in the playoffs, and it's Holt Nani. Wiley Brown, not there, rebound underneath. Terry Eves missed it, and Vandeweghe rebounds for UCLA. Here comes the lightning quick Foster. Nobody on Holt. He rarely shoots. Rodney McRae, a freshman from New York, rebounded. Holt Keen's taking shots a little early, Al. Here comes a man's first one. Darrell Griffith. Oh. Louisville leads it 4-2. Use that one on the board beautifully. Well, he goes in offensive streaks. Making that shot is bad for UCLA. Rod Foster, and a foul is on whom? Louisville's McRae, no basket. Foster is so quick, he almost created the foul for himself because uh, he saw it, his quickness two, able to get the defense in there, totally off balance. McRae picks up the foul. Larry Brown and his new... Wade Bay shoes, saddle shoes, not white shoes. He said, I don't trust anyone who wears white shoes in winter. But he's been wearing those Bay saddle shoes since the start of the tournament. He says he only will wear them one more game. He doesn't like guys out that put, put ketchup on eggs either, so you're in trouble. Mike Sanders ties it up at four. Griffin, not there. Rebound McRae, inside over Vandeweghe. Rodney McRae makes it six to four, Louisville. Rodney McRae had a great game Saturday afternoon. He's out of the gate early this time. Bolton having trouble, just does control. Can't hit it. Gets his own rebound and he is fouled by whom? 43, Derek Smith of Louisville committed the foul. Gonna see a basket down inside. Now, Darrell Griffith that time faded away too much, and it really wasn't there. He put it up long. Now, watch Rodney McRae take it inside. One of the young kids that made our NBC All Freshman team. There's that fade away by Griff. Well, see, he likes to play it off the grass. If you notice tonight, just about everything that he makes, he plays off the grass. Rodney McRae's brother Scooter, a sophomore injured in the third game of the season, sat out the year, so he will join his fellow McRae next year. There'll be a pair of sophomores. This Louisville club brings back an outstanding wealth of talent for next year. Foster can't hit. Griffith has it knocked away by James Wilkes. Wilkes inside, and he fouled a charge against James Wilkes. One dribble too many right there, and Brown did the smart thing waiting on him. He committed, he committed himself to the oh, air too soon. The, the man was in his way. Once he committed, he didn't have to move to charge. The game, Louisville 6, UCLA 4. We played nearly four minutes. You've got to remember, offensively, when the man has the ball, he's the contract to control himself. He should be able to stop on a dime, move up or sideways. Gray, high post, off to Wiley Brown, a sophomore, not there. What a rebound by McRae and a foul against Sanders of UCLA. Sanders just did miss time that one on the rebound, allowed McRae to go over his back. Normally that would be a foul situation. McRae was smart to keep his hands off Sanders' back. We'll see the play right here. Vanderway altered the shot by Brown. Rebounding. See the ball hit the rim for the second time. Sanders didn't realize it was going to do that. McRae gets another tough inside rebound. Rodney McRae at the line for Louisville. 6-7 from Mount Vernon, New York. Now on the, on the made foul shot, we're going to see Louisville. Here we have another look at it. See the ball hit the second time out. We'll see Rodney McRae, and I said it earlier, but he looks a lot like West Ensel. He also can release the ball to start a fast break off a rebound the same way. Louisville leads by four, the largest early lead of this game. Four minutes and 20 seconds have been played. And there's that full court zone press again, trying to force the ball down the right-hand side for some traps. Bolton to Wilkes. Vandaway on the weak side. Sanders open. No one picked him up, and he can't hit. They're giving Sanders the 15-footer. He normally will make that shot. I think they got to get Vandaway in the offense a little bit. He's only touched it once. A steal and a toss to Foster. He's two points. No, but he'll get two shots. Any time that Rockets has a breakaway, it's two points. Nobody in the world can catch him. Foster 
Foster is an excellent free throw shooter, hitting 83%, the best of the Bruins. Well, any time it's two points, Al, except that time. Because Jeremy Eve hustled down there, fouled him just in time. There's nobody in college basketball that can catch Rockets on a breakaway. How about West Matthews of Wisconsin? Wesley Matthews of Wisconsin. He's also from Connecticut. <laughs> they grow fast in Connecticut. You're right. Both Matthews and Foster are from that state. Foster, most unusual free throw style. He makes it eight to five. He gets very close to the 10 count, Dick. When you get the ball in your hands, you must shoot in 10 seconds. Let's see how long it takes. 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,009, 1,011. <laughs> And he makes them both. You are right, Coach. He did get two points in the breakaway. And we have a timeout. Nearly five minutes have been played in this 1980 National Collegiate Championship in the score. The Cardinals eight and the Bruins six. I say football. I want the movie. When I want the movie, it's... I love Lucy. One TV's not going to do. No. So RCA says, why not two? Two? Sure, during RCA's Two for the Money Days, when you buy any 1980 XL100 console, you'll get a black and white portable free. Free? Now I've got my football. I've got the movie. We've got an RCA console. A free portable, too. Hurry on down to your participating RCA dealer. And get two for the money, too. Now you can drive a car that's not like everybody else's car. The Cougar XR7. It's available with seats by Recaro. Stereos that scan. Electronic instrumentation. An ingenious automatic overdrive transmission. And a vast array of other options that help you create a car you'll be proud of. The 1980 Cougar XR7. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer. here, winning its 25th game in the last 26, beating Iowa. Ronnie Lester of the Iowa Star injured Saturday. UCLA took Purdue 67-62. And in the third place game tonight, a final, Purdue over Iowa, 75-58. Joe Barry Carroll, the All-American center of the Boilermakers, scored 35 points and set a new six-game NCAA scoring record with 158 points. The old mark was Tony Price of Penn, 142 set last year. Full court pressure again. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds, but it's man-to-man -man instead of zone pressure that you see from Louisville. Gary Eves, off by Foster. Griffith draws Holton. What an assignment for the freshman Holton. Sanders tapped it away, but controlled by Eves. This is the first time UCLA in the tournament has met a team that's quick. They were meeting strong teams like Clemson, Old Dominion, uh, Ohio State, and Purdue. It's stolen again. Sanders. His hands all over inside, and he's made three deflections already. UCLA looking for a tying goal. Five and a half minutes gone. Vandaway breaking underneath at the suggestion of Foster. Wilkes can't hit outside. UCLA getting the open outside shot, unable to connect. There's Griffin going inside, rebound to a big shot. He has incredible leaping ability. Good job keeping him away from the ball so far. Knocked away again. Foster made the play. A reminder, we'll be selecting the most valuable player to let Frank to award $5,000 to the university. Or home, our star plays. We'll announce that later in the game. Of course, 8 to 6. Darryl Griffin for the ball. Nice job by Holton defensively. Again, on Griffin. Not yet, Billy. What was happening? The middle was blocked. Let's see when the middle opened what happened. Larry Brown across the way in a prayerful pose. Ball batted around and controlled by Louisville. Brown thought it was kicked by the Cardinals. Well, it hit a man's foot, but it was strictly an accidental situation. He didn't go out to try to save it. Good back door. Griffith over Sanders. Tough shot. The All-American Griffith gets Louisville a 10-6 lead. That was a good call, Billy. Griffith has to go without the ball. They're overplaying it. The only way to stop him is to play him without the ball. After he gets it, as I said before, he can only play. What's happening, too, is any time he goes without the ball down the middle, Wilkes is dropping off McCray to help out, so they're going to have a little double-team situation. Foster, Wilkes wide open for yep. 15. He's way off the mark. Sanders rebounds and scores. They're going to give James Wilkes all he can eat from the outside. His outside shooting is suspect. Seven minutes have been played. Louisville with the ball, leading by 
two. Darrell's really not moving well without the ball so far in this ball. He's got a pick, but Foster caught up with it. Now it's Griffith over Holton, and a foul on Holton. A little touch foul right there. Larry Brown didn't like that one at all. We're going to see some blocking out. Now, here's a matchup extremely important. You've got a tough, young, strong kid going against an All-American. Look at Wally Brown box out and do a good job. To be honest with you, Vanderway should have rolled off and been a little more aggressive on the offensive board. Griffith drops it down the bottom of the well. It's 11 to 8, and Griffith now with five points to lead all scores. He had 34 in the victory over Iowa on Saturday. Vandaway rebounds. UCLA thrills by three. Holton, the playmaker, doesn't shoot much nor score. I can imagine him being there for three more years. He's like a coach on the court. Tapped away by Wiley Brown. Nice running job by Brown on Vandaway. In fact, I asked Coach Wooden before we were chatting prior to the start of the game, I said, of the four freshmen, which one would have fit into your style? He said, Holton right away. He said, he's such a fine playmaker. Wilkes throws it away. He led UCLA in turnovers this year. His pass went right into the Louisville bench. And Denny Crumbs Cardinals, leading by three, will take it the other way. Well, he got nervous there. The clock was starting to tick away. On an inbound pass, you can only hold the ball five seconds. Coming shortly, UCLA has Cliff Bruitt at the scorer's table. Griffith tried to take Holton inside that time. Eric Smith, and he was fouled. James Wilkes got him. The 1980 NCAA basketball championship program is a memento you'll treasure. Exclusive information on the final four, tournament records, plenty of photos and features included in this collector's issue. Send a check or money order. Four dollars to NCAA program, box 1980, Lexington, Kentucky, 40593. Preceding announcement for issues by the NCAA. Animated Larry Brown, 39-year-old graduate of the University of North Carolina and a member of the 1964 U.S. Olympic team. And the assistant coach on this year's Olympic team, if we have one. He feels the play is getting a little bit too rough underneath. And that's why he's trying to, uh, he's working one of the officials, I don't know which one. Derek Smith hits one of the two free throws, and Louisville's lead is four, with 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Throw it with the ball. I think a wise substitution putting Pruitt in the game because they've got to get some offense out of that forward position. Harold Griffith with a steal. Beautiful pass. Jerry Eames. What a time. block by Pruitt. And UCLA controls. Cliff Pruitt just into the game. What a move. Vandaway wants it. It should be two. Yeah. 12 to 10. Vandaway has four. Get the ball into the Stars' hands. I also think that Littleville's not getting the ball into Cliff's hands enough. We're going to see Mr. Instant Defense come in for Louisville, a product of this city, Indianapolis. He's returned home, Roger Berkman. Foul on Pruitt. Let's go back and see Pruitt at his defensive finest. I said Pruitt was a wise substitution from the offensive standpoint. Beautiful lead pass to Eves. Look at him from a defensive standpoint. Another nice freshman. Run. You know, it's unbelievable all these freshmen, Billy. They're so outstanding. Well, we've got two of our freshman All-American playing in this game, Foster and McCray, but uh, we probably had 40 we could have picked. Watch Pruitt drop his head here so he won't bang it against the backboard. Rodney McCray off the high post. Roger Berkman, he has the ball now for the first time for Louisville. And Darren Day can't hit, but McCray rebounds. No basket. No basket is the call. The foul before the shot on Sanders of UCLA. And for the Bruins, their sixth team foul. Louisville has committed only three. This is an incredible rebound. The second time that McCray, now he pushed off just enough to get Vandaway out of the way. Should have been a foul, but he gets by with the second time tonight grabbing the rebound over a man's shoulder. Danny Crum, his Cardinals lead by two. He went undefeated through the Metro Conference season, 14-0, and, and he's the winningest coach this year. 32 victories, only three defeats. He's the first coach in college basketball to get the 200 wins the quickest. He did it in less than uh, 10 years. He did it in nine and a half years. Faster than McGuire, faster than Wooden, faster than Rupp or Bobby Knight. 
Well, he didn't play the schedule I played. <laughs> played one more difficult. You know, that's the first time that any team's gone through the Metro undefeated in the course of a year. Show you the balance of that league. You know, before they were in the Metro, before the 1974-75 season, Louisville was in the Missouri Valley. Then they were independent one year when they went to the Final Four. And then they joined the Metro. Took a little time while they mopped up the floor. Now we're set to go with 11 minutes remaining in the first half. Louisville with the ball in a two-point lead. And UCLA in the zone defense on the out-of-bounds. It's the same thing that Louisville does. Nice pass. Brown can't hit. Daryl Allen's into the game for the first time. Rebounds. He's the biggest Bruin at 6'9". Darren Day, another freshman. It's deflected out-of-bounds by Berkman. Boy, he's in the right place at the right time so often. He has very quick hands. He picks up the tempo defensively. Now watch him get over there with his hand. There he is. He knew where that pass had to go. Really did a great job. That was two points for Vandeweghe if he'd had it inside. Derek yeah. Smith comes out, and Poncho Wright, number 44, another Indianapolis native, is in. So the two uh, Louisville players from this city are now in the game. That was a play by Kirkman. He went over the right-hand shoulder to make that steal because he knew that they would want to put it on the floor with his right-hand dribble. He's a smart player. Aaron Day, 6'7", freshman, another freshman, Pruitt. Oh, look at Allen cleaning out house inside. <laughs> Rod Foster, another freshman, connects. And the game is tied at 12 with 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. First half. They're still hearing some of the sounds that Allen put on Joe Barry Darrell's chest the other day in that warfare. Darren Day now is guarding Darrell Griffith. That means Griffith on a taller opponent. Almost stolen. Griffith got away with a push and scores. He never worries on the jump shot. He just goes up to one le level higher. But what he does now, he has his whole body together in the senior year. He wasn't that good of a shot from the outside his first three years, but he worked on it this summer. Larry's saying he pushed off. Here we see Berkman gets it inside. Good play, good hands by Griffin. Now here's where he's in a bind. He doesn't know really what to do, yet once he got himself under control, he just went up for the jump. Time out. Nine minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the first half. The Louisville Cardinals lead the UCLA Bruins for this 1980 National Collegiate Championship, 14 to 12. People would rather buy their life insurance from somebody they know and trust. That's why so many families are coming to State Farm Agents for their life insurance. Usually they have other kinds of insurance with us. We see them on a regular basis and we know their needs pretty well. And that makes it a lot easier to put together a life insurance program that's really tailored to their needs. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's life insurance the State Farm way. What's Texaco doing in a field of corn? Not growing it. Texaco's making gasohol. It's a mixture of 90% Texaco unleaded gasoline and 10% ethanol made from renewable crops like corn. Gasohol can't replace gasoline, but it can help stretch our available supply. And Texaco's selling gasohol in a number of states right now. Gasohol, one of the ways Texaco is working to keep your trust. Here's that last play as Griffith breaks the 12-12 tie. There he is, Dickie. Just gets himself under control. Well, can't go left, can't go right, so I go straight up in the air to the ceiling. Makes the turnaround jumper. Well, it doesn't look bad on that one. Watch on this play, another angle. Now, watch how Griff does give him the elbow. Oh, yeah, he made the foul. There was That's no obvious. question about it. That's what Larry Brown was up and yelling about. You know, Al, you made a good point about him squaring up to the basket. What you're saying there is his shoulders are looking right at it, and so is his head. Therefore, on his turnaround jumper, it's just like a regular jump shot. We're at the midpoint of this first half. Now Griffiths on Foster. UCLA looking for the tying goal. Deflected. He goes right to Pruitt. And a great block by Wiley Brown. Out of bounds. The ball was on the baseline or the player's foot was. Pruitt recocked that time, Billy, and still uh, got it blocked by Brown. Yeah, beautiful play by Wiley Brown. And there's number 34, Berkman again. See him getting his hands on the ball? Watch now the watch who gets the ball under the basket again. Berkman. He is incredible. I'm trying to show the recock, and you're pointing to something else. <laughs> <laughs> UCLA trailing by two, 941 left in the first half. Louisville on the out-of-bound zone defense. 
Darren Day. Pruitt stolen by Poncho Wright. The passer was too far away. They're all great back here. He comes. Lecrae can't hit it. It stayed the other way. Brown to beat. And he scores, and he avoided the charge. It's tied at 14. Well, that's the guy just before the game. Coach Woody said maybe the most gifted of the freshmen. Darren Day. He's very talented. Mr. D.D. Out of bounds to UCLA with nine minutes left in the half. UCLA has not led yet. Bell goes in there, uses the left hand. Rodney McRae has an easy one and didn't hit it. And then off to the races goes Darren Day. Sanders Beautiful. got away with a foul that time. Back to live action. It's Cliff Pruitt for UCLA. All the way pushed off. Good call. He did. First foul on Vandaway, and that puts Louisville in the bonus. While the Cardinals have committed only three team fouls, Louisville, on the other hand, with UCLA, seven team fouls, will now have the one and one the rest of this first half. It's surprising because Louisville, I feel, is playing a more physical game than UCLA is playing. You know, Al, one of the things that's obvious right away is that Denny Crum had an excellent matchup with Wiley Brown on Vanderway. He's been able to keep Vanderway away from the basket, and so far, Vanderway hadn't really been in the offensive flow. There's Griffith sitting down, taking a little rest, and staying out of foul trouble. Sometimes he picks up a few careless ones early. Well, the Cardinals have a tremendous break when they go to their bench. They go to Pancho Wright and Roger Berkman, which almost improves their team. Wright is a great shooter, and Berkman a sensational defensive player. When they ask Pancho Wright to sign an autograph, he signs it. Never wrong, Pancho Wright. <laughs> he says he calls this nap time, that nickname for Indianapolis. I'm glad to be in nap time. Tied at 14. McRae missed the free throw. UCLA looking for its first lead of the game. Eight minutes and 35 seconds left. Forcing the pass was Day. Off to Pruitt from 15. That's the first Bruin lead at 16-14. move and a block by Pruitt oh, and a foul it. on Pruitt. He didn't think so. Yeah. Second foul on Cliff Pruitt. All right. Jerry, he showed you what kind of athlete he is on this move. He gives a little double pump. Here he comes. Nothing there. Stays up. I thought it was a good block. It was, it was close. He's six foot seven now, Pruitt from Bourbon Day High School. Watch him come up. He might have caught him with the with the hip or the knee. Uh, that's always the out. Well, he sure didn't catch him with a hand. <laughs> Jerry Eves, two of his brothers played college athletics. His brother Terry, football at Kentucky, and brother Larry, basketball at Ball State. He's only a sophomore, 6'4". <laughs> Missed them both. Ancho, wait it. Right, get up there. Knocked out of bounds to Louisville. Oh, Poncho Wright showed us that leaping ability that we haven't seen from him so far in the tournament. P Poncho Wright's a great ball play. He didn't play last year because he had academic problems. He's only 6'5", but he was above the crowd on that last lead. Derek Smith, one of the sophomores, unable to hit. And the foul is on Berkman of Louisville. The fourth team foul, non-shooting foul. UCLA will play it on the side. You know, when you look over Louisville's stats, Derek Smith's had a fine year, but so far in the NCAA tournament, he just has not been able to get out of the box with that jump shot. Well, the last three games, Billy, his first uh, game at two were okay. UCLA got here, finishing fourth behind Oregon State, Arizona State, and Washington State. No contest in the Metro. Louisville undefeated, and then they rolled through their postseason tournament. Vandaway helping out in backcourt. Now it's two on two. But good hustle by Eves to force the turnover. Looking for the tying basket. Stolen by Foster and a foul on Eves with the knee. It's time to get your star back in, yep. Denny. Second foul on Jerry Eves. Here's, that's a bad pass by Smith. Foster just in the right place, and there was the call. Fisher right on top of it. How would you describe the tempo, Coach? Uh, I think it's uh, too quick, to be honest with you, for a championship game. Oh, here he comes. They couldn't hold him out too much longer. He set out for about two minutes. You've got to go in the finals with your, with your stars, and this guy belongs out here. That rest 
that was as much for to keep him out of foul trouble as it was for arrest. UCLA with the ball, leading Louisville 16 to 14. Less than eight minutes remaining in the first half. Carol Adams off today. Got the baseline, couldn't score, got too far underneath, and Derek Smith rebounds for Louisville. Kick Rodney, Rodney touched at that time, he blocked the shot. Smith, he short, did not hit him. But Allen's touched it last, Louisville is getting more chances in this game. UCLA so often has had only one shot. Louisville's getting the second and third chance, although they trail by two. Surprisingly, with Derek Smith, he's such a great shooter throughout the whole year. He's a 60% field goal shooter, I believe. And for the last three games, he's just been in a drought. And then it starts in your head, and all of a sudden, it's a big pink elephant in your head. And you just, oh, how can I get a basket? How can, how can I get off this snide? That's what he needs is one basket, and he'll be okay. There he is, Smith. He didn't get the basket, but he got the rebound. And now he'll, no, it still won't go in for Derek Smith. And when the guy's not hitting well, he should never take a real difficult shot like that. Rod Foster, UCLA, inside, can't hit. Sanders and Vandaway and rebound Poncho Wright. He is tough on the boards tonight. Daryl Griffith on Darren Day. Uh, good job by Daryl holding everybody back out. Over Tony Anderson. Griffith can't hit. Rebound Foster and a foul on Berkman. Second foul on Berkman. Here we're going to see this is out of bounds play. Derek Smith got it. Now that's the kind of shot you want to get him off the ground. You notice how he really didn't come down solid. Super rebound, but look at this shot. Not good shot selection. He had the ball, needed to keep possession. If you notice his arm, he's pulling it back. He's almost praying when he puts it up and it drops in. Next Louisville foul will send UCLA in the bonus. 16-14 Bruins, a low scoring first half. We played over 13 minutes. Anderson just in the game, used currently the second half of the year by Larry Brown. Foster just did dish it off to Vandaway, and he hits. UCLA enjoys its biggest lead, 18-14. Vandaway was six. Talk about the quiet All-American. He just relaxed. Put it right up there. Poncho right out to Daryl Tony Anderson, the third man to guard Griffith thus far for UCLA. Larry Brown wants to keep a taller man on him who's fresh at all times. Pass to Poncho Wright. Not a good shot again. McRae, another offensive rebound for Louisville. It's 18 to 16. Six points for McRae. He must play good for Louisville to win. And to think his brother's on the sidelines, Danny Crump would have never expected to be here. But the scooter not available to play. Bad pass by Day, and Berkman comes up with it for Louisville. Darren Day, a little too clever with a couple of his passes. Here comes Berkman, and the foul on Berkman for charging his third of the game. That'll there be a was shooting foul for UCLA. One dribble too many. Here you go, Poncho Wright gets up there, has to double, triple pump, McCray in the right place, a little half hook inside, score. He's only 6'7 in height, but he's a lot bigger than that. Well, with that body, when you see these athletes with those big rear ends, that puts him up to 6'10 to 6'11. 1816, UCLA. <laughs> it makes it wider, it doesn't make it taller. Yes, it does, Billy, because they eat up more space on the court and no one will get near them. So you recruited not only for height, but posterior. Well, I, I didn't. I wanted very thin ball players. I, I wanted guys to be quick. I think the name of basketball is to be quick. Foul against Griffith of Louisville, his first. Apparently, the scoreboard was not correct because UCLA did not shoot that last foul. According to our marks, uh, there was... 17 fouls. Now, apparently, this is the seventh team foul against Louisville. Kiki Vandaway, what a story. We told you about it Saturday. Father Ernie Vandaway, All-American at Colgate. Mother, Miss America. Uncle Mel Hutchins, All-American at BYU. Sister Tana on the 1976 Olympic team. You know, he didn't start playing basketball until he was 13 because he was the outstanding swimmer in his age group at 12 years. And then suddenly he took a liking to basketball and had a lot of folks at UCLA glad he did. Well, it reminds me of, when I look at him, I think of Dave DeBuscher, that played for the University of Detroit and went on to a great pro career. He's the same type of player. He hits a pair of free throws. It's 20 to 16. Five minutes, 11 seconds left in the first half, and there's a timeout. 
The Bruins of UCLA have a four-point lead. We return to our studios for this message. Did you know BF Goodrich TA radios are the best-selling line of high-performance radios? Really? Did you know Goodrich TA radios have won races all over the world? Really? Hey, the Goodrich Blimp! Really? Oh, no, Goodrich doesn't have a blimp. <laughs> For dependable TA radios, come to BF Goodrich, number one in high-performance radios. Hey, man, I want natural light. A dapper a skyscraper like you, Switch. Sure, for me, natural light's great taste run hoops around everyone else. And there's nothing artificial in this less filling beer. It's made with only natural ingredients. Yeah, but taste is why I switched. Whoa, nice, cashmere. Whoa, you can call it cashmere, you can call it reindeer. Or you can call for more beer. Natural light. Taste is why you'll switch. UCLA, 10 national championships, all under John Wooden, 10 and 12 years, and on four of those championship years, 67 through 71, Denny Crum, the Louisville coach, was Wooden's assistant. Larry Brown trying to follow in the footsteps. Gene Bartow and Gary Cunningham were the interim head men after Wooden left, and both felt the pressure. Larry Brown says he doesn't feel the Wooden pressure, that he's glad he's carrying on in the tradition. In fairness to both of those men, though, they had great records at UCLA. It's not like they faded out of the, out of the uh, picture completely in college basketball. That's right, Billy, just because they didn't win the national title. Poncho Wright not there. Mike Sanders rebounds for UCLA. It's a 20-16 to 16 game. UCLA in front. 4.50 left. Neither team has shot well. Both teams have defended it well. Look for Louisville next time down the, ball, down the court to get the ball to Daryl Griffin. Larry Brown in the corner of your picture, the head coach of UCLA studying the action. Cliff Pruitt lobbing to Vandaway, and Griffith blocked it. What a play by Griffith, and Louisville comes back with it. Excellent block. And Griffith sets up Derek Smith to score. Total player, Daryl Griffith. Makes the block, leads the fast break. Beautiful play. Griffith, outstanding, stealing the ball, passing it. Cliff Pruitt around right, throws it away. for UCLA, and Louisville has a chance to tie. Eames, not there, tipped in. Huncho Wright. Boy, he's shown a sleeping ability because that not seen from him. Time out, Larry Brown, as Denny Crumb's Cardinals has tied it at 20. You know what happens in a game like this? Louisville looks for the knockout punch. When they get a little run like this, they start smelling blood. And immediately, Larry Brown makes a good move and goes to a timeout to block the run. To stop basketball is won and run. And whoever can have the longest run usually ends up the victim. Daryl Griffith averaged 23 points a game this year, four assists a game, 85 steals a game to lead his team. Here he is, number 35, Griffith. This is a four-point turnaround here because that's an easy basket for Vandeweghe. Doesn't get it. Now, instead of him getting two, you see Louisville going the other way. Beautiful lead pass inside of Derek Smith. That might help his confidence, too. Big, big turnaround. Beautiful pass. Hey, look at that camera angle. Right down the pipe. He needed this. That, he had to score his first basket within three feet of the rim. Now he'll get more confidence from out around 15 feet. A great call by Larry Brown. You know, Larry Brown's one of the great, from years ago, there was great Jewish ball players in New York City. And Red Holzman and Sid Tannenbaum and Max Zlowski, and they governed the game, especially in the backcourt. And when Frank McGuire, because he played with a lot of Jewish ball players, went down to North Carolina, he went to New York City and picked Larry Brown on a Long Beach. And he went down there, and that started the subway from New York City down to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Now that ended it. That yeah, ended it? That ended it. Well, because Larry Brown was the last of the New York guys to go. The 57 team were all Catholic kids from New York. Well, that was their mistake. <laughs> Tied at 20 with three minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Intense play, Wiley Brown, and it's out of bounds. Touched, apparently, by Cliff Brook. What's happening to UCLA right now? They're having the ball get in the hands of the non-ball handlers trying to make plays. they got to get back there, probably bring Holton back into the game to settle down their ball handlers. Opportunity to take 
take the lead. And you see Holton coming into the game, Dick. Larry Brown trying to get the ball handling back. Wiley Brown, blocked by Pruitt oh. and taken away by Pruitt. He's made three outstanding defensive plays, hasn't he? He plays with no fear, but the best thing about a freshman is they become a southpaw. Band away, blocked out of bounds by Poncho Wright. Let's go back and see Cliff Broad. Where's 34? The same number as David Greenwood, the All-American. Also went to the same high school, Bourbon Day in L.A. Wiley Brown just didn't respect those fellas inside. Beautiful block, took it away, going the other way. You know, with freshmen, you win some games you shouldn't win, and you lose some you should win. Aaron Day outside to Foster. So Day, Foster, and Holton, three freshmen are in the game for UCLA, along with the senior Vandaway and the sophomore Sanders. It's the zone defense. Foster from outside, short, and it goes to Wiley Brown. Not a good shot at that time. Errol Griffin, it's tied at 20. Three count in there. Eddie Crump, the head coach of the Cardinals in the corner of your picture. Good patience by Lloyd. Griff got to learn to go without the ball out there. They're overplaying him on the ball side. Here he goes around. I should be all right right now. There it is. Griffin had it taken away by Foster. Quickness against quickness. Here comes Foster. Score and he was fouled. What did you Wiley tell Brown. me, Billy? Who's faster than this kid? West can, Matthews. Can we see that again? Possibly. <laughs> There's nobody faster than that guy. You know, that would be interesting sometime to get guys in basketball to see who's the fastest end line to end line. Here he goes. Here he goes. He goes by everybody. Fine play. Well, when you consider they had in the backcourt to try to solidify the ball handling, Larry Brown puts in three guys that are all fresh. <laughs> Is that unbelievable? The national championship game, a year ago, they were trying to win a state championship. At the line, Rod Foster. He is from Connecticut, as we mentioned before. St. Thomas Aquinas High School. High School All-American averaged 30 points a game last year. He was Larry Brown's final recruit. And the, here he is again, end to end. Whoop, there he goes. The only thing that stops this guy is the out-of-bounds. And Wiley Brown. <laughs> you know these four freshmen, they averaged 106 points between them in their senior year in high school. He hits it coolly, 22-20, UCLA back on top. Just a bit more than two minutes left in a low-scoring first half. Griffin, good fake. Oh, my. Play. That was a clear out for Griffin, and we're going to see more of that now. They're going to isolate Holton line. Everybody else down low. Kiki came over and tried to intimidate him, but he just went up over Kiki. Foster all the way. Uh, he scores. There's that, there's that slow guy, Billy. <laughs> he saw a crack in the door, and boom, he was in the house. I said the other day he runs like a guy, like a balloon when you take the air out. It just flies. He's a Rip road runner. Can't hit. Oh, here Two we points. go. Breakaway. Let's Foster. see who's going to catch him. Let's see who's going to catch him. Oh. Daryl Griffith tried. <laughs> it's UCLA's turn to cheer. 26-22 with a minute and a half left. It's an illegal play, and it should have been Louisville's ball. Here he goes, coming through the water bug. Nice play. That's a good hesitation dribble, too. I'm changing his name from Rockets to Jetstream. You know, we saw Glenn Swan look like Bereshnikov in slow motion. Foster has some of that same mid-air action. Rod, it's Darren Day, 6-7 against McGray, 6-7. UCLA gains the tap. Tony Anderson. Cliff Pruitt. Pruitt, not there. But Gray is. What a rebound. One minute remaining in the first half. Wide open. Poncho Wright, he's a good shooter. 26 24. Poncho Wright has four points. Poncho Wright will bottom him out every time he's open. There's the zone press again. 47 seconds. UCLA, an underdog as they've been almost throughout the entire tournament. Leading by two. We'll see if they go for the final shot. Apparently they will. Oh, 
Well, Holton's a smart player. He pulled the ball back out, threw it, was getting a little nervous with it. Pruitt, tough shot, and a foul on right. Pruitt forced a bad shot. But Dick, gets the foul. Dick Pruitt is a pretty tough guy to handle because he can put the ball on the floor for a guy 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he came close to jumping in that time. Yep, here he, he comes. He's the 4'8 player in the inner city in L.A. last year for Bourbon Day. He, Looks to me like he jumped in a little bit, Billy. Well, Pancho Wright's got his hands full handling, that's for sure. Pruitt has scored two points. He had trouble, as did most of the young Bruins early this year, shooting free throws. They had big leads late in games early and lost them because other teams would foul and they couldn't convert the free throws. But they've been shooting 76% the second half of the year, and any team would take that. Well, he loves the big game. He's a good ball handler, and he uh, doesn't seem to have any fear. He comes out shooting. UCLA has made all seven of its free throws, eight out of eight in the first half, and lead by four points, 25 seconds left in this first 20-minute period. One Griffin. shot, I think David will, I think Griffith will take it. He's asking for him to get down to one four, so he can just have the whole top of the court to himself. There's a little one-on-one, -on -one, folks. Darrell Griffith. That's not fair to make that type of a shot. Three seconds. It'll come. Oh, oh. A block by McRae. What a sensational end to the first half. Griffith with a long rainbow and McRae with a block. Rodney made a super play on that block shot that time. For the national championship, 1980, we're at halftime. UCLA 28, Louisville 26. Did basketball originate in the United States? We have a thought at halftime. In goal, in his first professional game, our own Olympic queen, Jim Gray. The Coke and a smile makes me feel good. That's the way it should be. I'd like to say it. The world is with me. Coca-Cola has right. Have a Coke and a... Take it from two guys. We've had a lot to smile about lately. I just bought a high mileage Mercury, and I'm proud of it. If you think only imports give you high gas mileage, think again. This sexy, sporty Capri from Lincoln Mercury has about the same mileage ratings as Volkswagen Scirocco, and comparably equipped is sticker priced over $1,300 less. Capri, it's a high mileage car built in America from Lincoln Mercury. Now that's something to be proud of. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer, this pride is shining the brokers at Bache, a winning attitude working for you. I'm a broker at Bache, and I like nothing better than helping my clients make money. Bache gives us every kind of investment tool and really tries to make me a winner with every one of my clients. We get back up, like this market comment, every morning. Research up to the minute. To me, the difference between winning and losing for my clients is handling each one as an individual. The way I look at it, I don't work for Bache. I work for my clients. The winning attitude at Bache. Put it to work for you. If you think all steel-belted radials are alike, watch this, a Goodyear radio. Michelin, Goodrich, all losing air, going flat. Uniroyal's new Royal Seal, no air loss. Inside, Uniroyal's revolutionary puncture sealant surrounds and seals most tread punctures permanently. Uniroyal's new Royal Seal, for the quality tire that's tougher than nails. You want Uniroyal there. At halftime, UCLA out in front of Louisville, 28 to 26. At the moment, the crowd being greatly entertained by the UCLA cheerleaders in their modern dance routine. You think Dr. Naismith invented basketball? We'll take a look at that, as well as some first-half observations. We come back with the IBM College Basketball Report following these messages from your local station. Tony Randall, Fantasy Islands, Herve Villachez, Lola Falana, Dorothy Hamill, Ballet's George De La Pena, Shabadou, and more. The Big Show, followed by United States Tuesday. On United States, Libby prepares for a reunion with her uncle. He drove to a hardware store, said he had to pick up a few things. I found out one of them was my skirt. Tuesday. To make America go, let us do it. To solve the energy show, let us do it. Those shortages turn into cheers. We've got the power for hundreds of years. Let us do it. Let us do it. We're America's answer. We're cold. Hun, 
It's me, Herbie. You didn't give me enough money. I've been in the checkout line so long, the prices went up. Next time, Herbie, shop Quick Pick Market. No checkout line. You're in 14 Country, WFIE-TV, Evans Division. This is the original. That's the copy. With the IBM Series 3 copier, the quality is so good, it's hard to tell the copy from the original. It's easy to make a one-sided copy or a two-sided copy, even a reduced-sized copy. The IBM Series 3 copier. Between the two of us, this is the original. He's right. So am I. Our score at halftime has UCLA out in front of Louisville by a score of 28 to 26. UCLA working hard on the defensive end held Daryl Griffith to just 11 points. Their own star, Kiki Vandaway, registered eight. UCLA's leading scorer.